Purple Mountains. Tell me about that. That one is a really, really special record, not just to myself, but to uh, the fans of, you know, this is the thing, his name. I always like, whenever I'm on the spot, I should have had his name written down. But David Berman. Yes, thank you. David was, well, back in the Silver Jews period, mm -hmm. his music was so powerful and his poetry was out of this world. And I just loved the songs. I loved it. I was listening to them years ago and just, I don't know, it was like this raspy baritone. He reminded me of the beats. He was friends with um, uh, the dude from Pavement. Um, uh, gosh, of course, I'm going to forget. Stephen Malcolmus. And they actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, started Silver Jews together. And then they grew to, I think Stephen, you know, with Pavement got really big and busy. And then David would just continue with Silver Jews with varying members. And then at the end, he, he had a lot of issues with drugs and depression. And just like I did, I also went through a very similar period. And I actually, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, I had been through a suicidal period in my life and more than once actually. And so he had also, I related to a lot of his words and his wisdom. And then he did this incredible record, Purple Mountains. And it was just embodied so much of how I've felt in my life and how difficult my, my time was that it just, I felt like I was like living a moment through his eyes and then he took his own life like i can't remember how many weeks or months after i think it was within a month after the release of uh, of this album and i was just so shocked it was like i've gone on the silver juice journey i've just gotten into this record just though because i didn't listen when it first came out i had just gotten into it and then he died and i was like uh what just was starting to hear the songs in my in my um, morning runs, because that's where I love to listen to music is when I'm mm. running. And I got, I got obsessed. I just started reading, like listening and reading anything he's ever written or, or um, I started uh, listening and watching every interview. And I just saw something about him that many of us have experienced and still do to this day. And it was just so real. You, it all just, like it wasn't about music anymore. It was about a man who was in severe pain, but also in euphoric times of having success with music and failures and ebbs and flows and ups and downs, you know, divorce, marriage, drugs, everything. Like he just did it all. He was, and then he just, yeah, then he's gone. And so it was kind of like someone turning the music off at a party abruptly and telling everyone mm. to leave. And I felt like I was standing outside the house with the door locked going, what happened? I still have six beers in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel in his music like that song, all my happiness is gone? Like you listen to the lyrics and you're just like, oh, like, wow. Like this is a suicide note in a way, you know? And some of the uh, reviews that I read, they were basically saying that, that the lyrics are almost like a suicide note uh, yeah. just loved him and just know that it wasn't you know obviously it couldn't have been us because we're his fans and he didn't know what all of us obviously but in a weird way it's like he's still saying that it's mm -hmm. not you just maybe so we'd understand i don't know i'm not sure it's when you've been around and you've experienced suicide before firsthand which i have you you yeah, something about it just nobody can quite shake. It's one of the mm. most like, whoa, you like jump ship, man. That's crazy. So it's sort of like a weird, haunting, sort of everlasting aftershocky kind of feeling. Yeah, it's weird. 